scrappers and planet lovers, Tin Man here with another video. So it's extremely cold outside this morning, so I thought it would be appropriate to do a video on heaters. As you can see behind me, I have a number of heaters. They come in all shapes, sizes, styles, and every one of them I did find on garbage day. And my rule is before I scrap anything, I do plug it in to check if it works. And interestingly, these first three right here work perfectly fine. Uh, and I'm gonna make a lot more money selling them whole in good workable condition than I would from the scrap material. This is an older style. I actually just had this on. It produces a tremendous amount of heat. This is an old GE instant fan heater. This one here, I actually had one of these a couple years ago in my apartment. It's a rotating style. Uh, not sure why it was thrown out, perhaps the tacky color. And this one here is an interesting one. This is a wall heater that is mounted. Uh, but again, all three of these work perfectly fine. So I am not gonna scrap these. I'm gonna probably sell them at a yard sale, even 10 to $15 for each. Way more money than I would make for scrap material. So I am just gonna move these three right here. Uh, you do find some of them still like this that don't work, but again, you wanna make sure you check because it is amazing what people throw out just because they want to upgrade or they're tired of something or they don't use it or they're moving. So again, check things before you scrap them. The ones behind me, all of them are different styles that you see. And I don't wanna to look too much at this one because I do have a video on a similar style like this. So I am gonna include in my description the link to that video. But I did want to mention the cord to this. This is a nice uh, heater here. This one was actually found at a job site. So you will find a lot of heaters, especially in the winter time at job sites. Uh, the construction workers are putting them in the house because they lack the heat. Uh, they break, so they are thrown out. But the reason I wanted to show this one is because this one has an interesting wire to it. Uh, it does have a nice shell of tin that's going to give me eight cents a pound. But this wire, the reason I wanted to look at that is because there are right now categories of appliance wire at the scrapyards. As appliance wire, you have 40% appliance wire and 60% appliance wire. This wire as is, if I was to bring this in, would be classified as 40% appliance wire. And the rule at a scrapyard is they will look at plastic to copper ratio and copper recovery. Because this has three individual coated strands of copper and an outer coating of plastic, there is higher plastic here, less copper, but it is still going at a great price. This right now in London, Ontario is going for $1.35 a pound. If I was to just have these three coated wires here uh, without the outer coating, this is higher copper recovery, less plastic. So these three as uh, standalone would be classified as 60% appliance wire and currently that is going for $2.19 a pound. So an amazing price for that. But again, the reason I wanted to show this one especially was because in a lot of my videos, I talk about not removing the outer shell. Cords from appliances like your vacuum cleaners, dehumidifiers, microwaves, they do have a really nice outer shell of uh, plastic on them. And by removing that outer shell, I am losing a lot of value from the weight of that plastic. This wire, however, as you can see, if I bring it up to the camera, it has an extremely small or thin plastic coating on it. So this one will be worth taking off. And especially because these wires are really thick copper strands. So it is worth my while to remove this outer coating. And this one, I am actually gonna go one step further because the wire in here is a nice thick copper. So I'm actually gonna remove the uh, plastic coating on these individual ones as well and upgrade this copper to number two copper, which is currently going for $4.49 a pound or $4.43 a pound. So an excellent price. I will include in my description as well the full teardown of this, the final weight of this copper to see if it was a good choice or not. Uh, but again, some of your wire is not worth stripping. This one, given the thickness of this, is in my opinion. So I will have a full breakdown of a video that I did already from a style like this. Here you can see 
A couple other ones, this is an older one. This may have been in someone's garage. The wire was cut. A lot of times scrappers will drive by, just cut the cord, take that. But this is a really good item. This is a nice tin shell to it. Uh, tin right now is going for about eight to nine cents a pound in Sarnia. It's going for about 14 cents a pound in London. So an excellent price right now, easy to uh, store up weight. I just brought in 500 pounds of tin yesterday actually. So it is an easy item to make money on. You find it all over, but a nice shell here. Uh, definitely an older style. Okay, I did cut from one of the other appliances I have. Another example of your uh, cord you have, another appliance cord. This would be classified as is as your 60% wire because there you can see it has two strands of copper, only one coating of plastic. So this is an appliance wire that would automatically be classified as 60% appliance wire. You do wanna make sure you separate them from your 40 and 60. Uh, I made the mistake years ago of putting it all together, waiting till I was going to the scrap yard and then took the time to separate it. It took me several hours to do. So if I have two separate bins, it's a lot easier as I go along. These ones as well are common ones you're gonna find, these little ones. They always have a nice safety mechanism on the bottom. If they tip over, they will turn off, you know, to prevent fire. Here's a different style of it. These two, I have already removed the outer screws to, okay? You can see inside of it, um, there is a little bit of plastic, but this plastic shell, there is some tin on that, and I'm actually gonna leave this as is. Um, scrap yards don't really care if there's a little bit of plastic on metal items, um, so, I can leave that. Some scrap yards will actually pay you for plastic. Unfortunately, here in southwestern Ontario, scrap yards will just throw it in the garbage and they will not give you value for it um, if it is separate. So it does depend on where you live, uh, your scrap yard. But again, because this has some metallic plate to it or screen, I'm just gonna leave this as is. If it was a part, unfortunately here, this plastic would just be thrown in the garbage. But inside, some interesting items here, both of them, I'm just gonna open this one a little bit for you. You can see right here, there is a aluminum fan or grill. Uh, inside, there are a couple components, little buttons, um, and I am gonna look at some of these. This one especially, because this is more common, um, but this one has a nice little fan. Uh, I do need to find my snippers here. Just wanna pull this up to the camera. So there is going to be a copper fan in here that I'm going to look at, okay? I want to cut the wire. All of this wire that you see in here is going to be thrown into my 60% appliance wire. So again, one coating of plastic. You can see right on the bottom there, there is my safety shutoff right there. There's the click. So this is actually a relay box. There is a small bit of silver inside of that. If I was to show an example if i broke this open okay silver contacts okay little relay boxes um hmm. i have one somewhere that i just oh here we go just gonna pull it off this is from a different model okay but right here this is actually out of the inside of a uh, microwave but this is the same box if i was to open this up and i'm just gonna Peel it like this, make sure I put safety glasses on. Okay, but I just use a screwdriver if I wanted to or a hammer to break it. It's just a plastic casing. Okay, there we go. So inside of here, there is the different little mechanisms. I'm gonna pull that out. But if I fold this, you can see that little dot does have a trace of silver on it. So a little bit of silver, uh, brass plug right there. Uh, so these little boxes, are relay boxes and again in this machine it is any type of clicking apparatus buttons push buttons they do always have a trace bit of silver in it so silver is an amazing item or precious metal that is in so many different appliances and i do have a video on places where you can find free silver i will include that video in my description as well but here in the back you can see nice small copper motor so there is some number two copper that I'm going to remove out of this motor. You do want to check it. You want to scratch it with a uh, file. If I was to scratch that copper and it revealed a metallic look underneath, it's going to be aluminum. 
A lot of your newer items like vacuum cleaners and stuff, the manufacturers are starting to replace the copper wire with aluminum wire. So if it was a wire, I'm gonna leave it as is and just get motor price, which is about 10 to 15 cents. But if this is copper, I'm gonna take it off for sure, separate it because again, $4.43 a pound for number two copper, it all adds up. Okay, so a nice copper motor there. This right here, as I said, these are common items. Some of them are larger, but you can see I put a magnet to it. This is going to be an aluminum grill. And right now at uh, Sarnia, Ontario, you can get about a dollar a pound for these. This is very light, it's not a pound, uh, but some of your uh, dehumidifiers do have aluminum grills. Most of them are copper in, inside of them, but you will find some that are aluminum. So there is a separate category and any type of copper aluminum radiators, you wanna make sure you pull that copper, uh, the coils on the outside, the little brackets, if you will cut those off. But this is all aluminum. They do have, you can see inside, a little bit of glue Okay, but these are their own price. And as I said, some of them are small like this. Some of them are larger, but the aluminum grills like this are worth money. Okay, the rest of this plastic, unfortunately, is gonna be garbage. Uh, but these are very easy to take apart. Okay? I always love the little nozzle at the top here. There's always a small little square button. Okay, and I'm just gonna pull this off actually this little box here. Okay, inside this box is going to be inside, there is a couple cords. You can see, just gonna fold that if it doesn't break off. But unfortunately, because it's so cold in here right now, I should turn a fan on, but my glasses are starting to fog up. But inside of that, you can see that little box does have a little bit of copper. There's usually two of those in those little nozzles. So you do wanna open those, get that copper out. Okay, the rest of this does have a little bit of uh, contacts here. There is a little bit of metal. Just put a magnet to it. So you can see that is magnetic. I just wanna make sure there's no contacts there, no silver contacts. There's gonna be one on the bottom there if I just bend this up. Okay, fold it right there on the bottom. Okay, so that inner one, wanna make sure you check them. There is just a little bit, it's a little silver contact on that one. But the rest of this, I'm gonna throw right into my tin once I remove this wire, okay? So again, these are very easy to take apart. This big one too has that nice grill on it for tin, okay? Get that wire, make sure you put it all into your 60% recovery, okay? I wanted to show this one as well. This is another type of heating lamp. Someone did remove the back cord as well. But the reason I wanted to show this one is because, as you can see, put a magnet to the fan, the grill. This one is magnetic. You can see that. However, the back shell is non-magnetic. So this could actually either be aluminum or stainless steel. So there is going to be um, a couple different prices for it. If this was aluminum, it would give me clean aluminum price, about 50 cents a pound. If it was stainless steel, it would give me about 77 cents a pound. And this stainless steel, if it was stainless steel, would be classified as non-magnetic stainless steel. And the rule is, or the way you can check, if you will, is called the spark test. Unfortunately, the magnet is gonna be the first thing that allows you to identify if it's aluminum or non-magnetic stainless steel, or it could be magnetic stainless steel. But the grinder test, the spark test, is the best test to, depend, to see if it's aluminum or stainless steel. If I hit this with a grinder and it sparks, it's gonna be stainless steel. If I hit it with a grinder and it does not spark, it's going to be aluminum. So I'm gonna check that right now, put my safety glasses on for you, just to show you, turn it on. So you can see that that did not spark. So this is aluminum, so 55 cents or 50 cents a pound for this outer shell here. I do have to remove the tin uh, or I'm gonna get downgraded for sure. Do have to remove as well the plastic backing, just opening up the screws. There's gonna be some more wire in here. Even when these scrappers drive by and cut that cord, so as you can see, someone did that. 
there is still going to be copper cord all the way down the neck. So you do miss out on a lot of it if you're just cutting from there. So you wanna make sure you get everything if you're scrapping, but some aluminum backing on this. The heating coil in here, I do wanna check that. Uh, some of it is magnetic. If not, um, I will actually just throw it right into my tin. Uh, but again, a heating coil. There are for ovens, for example, those spiral uh, heating coils, a separate category. Uh, inside your oven, those burners, if you will, there is a category for all of those together at a scrapyard as well. So I could actually probably throw that heating coil into that pile as well. It's about 20 cents a pound for those heating coils. So better than tin price for sure. And ovens and stoves and, and uh, toaster ovens you do find quite often. So again, there is some various metals on here that you wanna separate. The last one I want to look at here is this one. This is an interesting one because it is all wood. And this one actually did work. The reason I'm taking it down or tearing it down, however, is it did not produce a tremendous amount of heat. So the motor did work. There was something wrong with it. Uh, I do have to make sure I can't sell it as is. Uh, so I do want to make sure I tear it down for this video. There is a nice tin backing on it, you see there. So again, tin, eight cents a pound for sure. Going to get some good money from that. You can see it's very thin. It does not take up a lot of space in my car. Tin is an easy item to build up weight. Inside of here, there is a wood box. Okay, it is mounted down with some screws, but another nice tin shell here. Okay, so just gonna kind of open this for you right now to see what I have, different styles for sure. Uh, just wanna quickly unscrew this. Okay, and all of these little brackets that you're gonna see here are gonna be some tin, okay? All of my screws, you can see I always keep my screws on a magnet. So all of my screws came from inside of here and easy item to transport, look at that. This is almost nine pounds as is, just of screws and little pieces of uh, tin that I've produced just from the um, scrapping. Uh, easy way to transport as well as safely. You know, don't have to worry about the screws falling out, potentially puncturing someone's tire at a scrap yard. Okay, so great item as well, your screws. And I did have a comment, actually this morning, someone asked me, what's the difference between tin and steel? Can I get steel price for some screws? The answer is yes. In order to be classified as steel at a scrap yard, the item has to be thicker than a quarter inch. So items like your structural beams, I-beams, um, items like that are going to be uh, trampoline poles too. Those things are thicker. So those would be steel. However, I don't get a lot of steel. And there are definitely screws and bolts that are going to be bigger than a quarter inch. So here's a nice screw that I pulled out of one of my uh, teardowns. So this is definitely going to be thicker than a quarter inch. However, I don't have a lot of it. Steel is only about two cents more a pound. So for me, I will just bring it in as tin. Okay, um, you can see there is a little bit more tin here I wanna get off later. So again, it depends on your load. I'm not gonna separate it just for five pounds of steel. I would rather just put it all together with my tin. So again, it's up to you, but that is the difference. It is, tin is less than a quarter inch. You wanna make sure you have, and some people do call it shred. So I did have some people say, why do you call it shred? In Southwestern Ontario here, it is classified as tin or shred. Okay, so there are rules depending on where you are, where you live, but that is the difference. So hopefully that answered that question. Okay, but inside here, you can see a lot more sheet tin. I want to get to this fan here. So a lot of screws that I have to go through. Okay, someone else asked me, why don't I ever use a drill to get these screws out? Uh, I don't know, I like the movement of this. For me, it's therapeutic in here. Uh, maybe it also helps keep my hands warm right now, so <laughs> there's a lot of reasons. But some nice tin shred here. That wood, I can recycle that wood, which is nice. But So here, just opening this up, here is a really nice motor that you see here. This motor is gonna have some copper in it. 
I have a small little circular motor here as well, just like your um, microwaves. They have a small little rotating motor. A lot of people do forget those. Okay, so again, some more nice screws here. Want to get the last one. Some nice wire in here. Okay, really nice amount of tin in here. So good find for sure. It is unfortunate that this thing doesn't work, but gonna scrap as much of it as I can and recycle the rest of it. So another appliance diverted from the landfill or electronic, if you will. But this does have some really nice copper inside of it. Okay, and I do also want to include in my link a video on just taking apart motors, different types of motors, different styles that you will find. Okay, these ones, again, you will commonly find these ones in your microwaves. Okay, where's my cutter here? It is. Okay, so just removing this. Okay, if I look at the tape, there is some tape around this, but all I'm gonna do is just break that. Look at that beautiful copper inside of it. There is also, a lot of people do forget the copper that comes off of here. I will actually just cut this with a pair of side cutters. There you can see, that too is gonna be copper, so I'm gonna cut on both ends, get all of the copper I can, some nice copper windings, so number two copper. The rest of this is gonna be tin, um, and someone else asked me why would this not be steel, and the reason is, again, because every one of these are individual plates, so this is all plates put together. They are not a quarter inch, every one of them um, separately. So some tin. Here is that motor, as I said, little small motor. Just gonna try and open this a little bit. But there is another motor, that circular one that you see here. You wanna make sure you just crack that open, put it on my vise, I'll hit it. The bottom plate will fall off. There is a nice spool of copper inside. And the last thing, this wheel, put a motor to, or a magnet to it. It too is non-magnetic. If I check the grinder test again, see if it's aluminum or stainless. As you can see, that thing was dusty for sure. A lot of dust in there, but it was non-magnetic, so that's gonna be aluminum. There is gonna be a small steel bracket that I have to pop out. And all I do is I'll just use a hammer, break it through there, open it. But some more clean aluminum, a lot of nice tin shred here. There is a small circuit board. Look at that circuit board at the top. We're just gonna turn it. Small little transformer on there that has some copper as well that I'm gonna take out. There are four or five relay boxes there. So those plastic boxes, I do have another example right here. Okay, so here you go. So small transformer has some copper in it. These little relay boxes you see has a couple of those little ones like that. Break those open. There's a little spool of copper in there as well and some more silver. So a great tear down here, obviously. A lot of free dust that I have to clean up there, but some great items. Heating fans, heaters, find them a lot. Um, and some of them, as you saw there, do work. So rule, check to see if they work before you start tearing them down, but they are a great scrappable material and they do come in all sizes, shapes, and styles. So hopefully that helped clarify things. I will include in my description, obviously, several of the links to videos that I've discussed. So if you're interested, go check those out. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please stay warm, comment down below, like, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Tin Man out.